We should be live, guys. So, hello. See here. All right. Uh, I, I, see the the live. Live. I see the live. Awesome. Ready? We should be live. Right? And hello, well, good morning to all of you. Second episode of uh, Bottoms Up Perspective. And um, just a little introduction of, um, you know, Bottoms Up, right? I've been getting a lot of um, questions, um, inquisitions about, uh, I even have people asking if I spell it wrongly, you know, like Bottoms Up. Isn't it Bottom Up or Bottoms Up? Seriously, um, it's, it's a matter of perspective, right? Uh, bottoms can mean like um, the one that we use uh, with our body to sit around, right? So there are four pairs of bottoms here. Today yeah. uh, used to be three. Now we have a plus one. Um, so I'm probably going to get um, Mr. Timothy D. Jesus to introduce himself in a while. But um, uh, we are here. We are here as an alignment to spread or to share messages that um, resonate with all of us. Uh, by bottoms up, literally, what we mean is that uh, we all we all have a message, we all have a voice, and we deserve to have a space to share with all of you what we are thinking. In a way, um, I used to say this: man, uh, guy, and girl on the street. Until I got corrected again to say that ah, oh, you know, that's a little too gender specific. So we need to go like folks on the street, whatever, guys. You know, like the guys on the street, they don't really care about that. You know, so um, the second episode today, uh, we are here to talk about uh, the platform that brought the four of us together, literally. So we're going to start with a, a very overarching topic called LinkedIn. By the way, by the way, we did not receive any advertising dollars from LinkedIn to do this. So yep. we can say whatever we want based on the platform. I, 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 I took some you... advertising dollars. <laughs> <laughs> That's Kevin, not, not me. So, no. um, so this platform brought the four of us together, right? Um, and the four of us comes from diverse backgrounds, which represents the guy, girl on the street. Um, I think we have an entrepreneur. We have, um, I think, Timothy, our new entrant. Um, if I'm accurate, a solopreneur. Um, Jeremy is uh, still with the cooperation. And for myself, um, I'm someone that uh, all over the place. Uh, anywhere where there's, uh, where there's the cash, probably you can see my face. Um, so for today and for now, spoken too much, um, I, I want our new entrant to introduce himself, mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Timothy D. Jesus. So put on a round of applause. Nice to oh, meet you. Right, so Woo! Mr. Straight oh. Shooter. We can't hear you, Tim. All right. Um, while he's fixing it, let's um, swing slightly. Oh. Um, so, Jeremy, maybe you can give us a brief kind of um, orientation. How did you know about uh, this platform and what got you in in the first place? Oh, we, we're gonna we're gonna start with our stories now. You you yeah, sure you want to start? Let's, let's 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 do it, and then um, okay. Timothy will catch back. No worries about that one. And then yeah. uh, I'm doing this opening now because um, Kevin is now very, very busy curating contents for us. Kevin is our, our host. And once he's ready, I'm going to swing the airtime back to our host in Kansas awesome. City. Right. So, yep. Kevin, let us hear you when you're ready. Um, I, think I am now, actually ready whenever you are. So, great. I'm good. Great. Maybe I should so, let Kevin go first. I'm oh, good. you want me to go first? Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. You can talk about yourself, uh, you and Jennifer, or you and the yeah. kids, <laughs> whatever so, it is. So, um, looks like, you know, there's a few people hopping on. Um, let's see what's going on here. Um, looks like we're Hello. live, so. Hello, um, Will. So, just want to say uh, thank you for everyone to for hopping on, you know, live today, and, um. Jacqueline Young is online, so I wanted to say hello to you and thank you for joining us on uh, Bottoms Up Perspective. And today we go talk about the platform we all absolutely love, right, is LinkedIn, you know, and that's how Eldrick and Jeremy and um, Timothy and all of us got connected, right? And um, yeah. so, so we want to leave um, this platform where it's uh, we want this live show to be very engaging. So one of the key things is we want you guys to comment, ask questions, and um, even 
say if, hey, we don't like what you guys are talking about. Even negativity is great too. Uh, we can agree to disagree uh, because Definitely. that's the whole point of having a perspective, right? Everyone's yeah. perspective is a little different. And um, uh, I want to say hi to Stephen Liu, just hop on. So hello, Stephen Liu. Thanks for hopping on. Um, we're doing great here. And um, in Kansas City, we're all working from home. Okay. Oh, so working from everyone, home. Everyone. Yep. Means hang out with the family, you know, and it's almost like a vacation because oh. every day I go drive 40 minutes to work. Um, and then I come home around like 7 p.m. at night. So this is nice. Um, I get to get off work and just change my shirt. And then um, I can see my kids because they're right outside the store right here. Yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and that's brilliant. So maybe maybe I'm just going to take some airtime back from you while you can bring the two chaps back into action, Kevin. Um, yep, just, just, a, just, a, just a brief recap uh, in a way that uh, for myself, uh, can you guys hear me the okay, other two musketeers are back. Um, Timothy, yeah. I think. Timothy. Um, yep, I can now? hear both. I we can, can hear you. you. Okay. We can hear you. Okay. Sorry about that. Really? Okay. Um, maybe it's just me, but uh, I'll, I'll, I'll let it slide. Um, so, so I got into the platform. Um, I don't think I don't think that was relatively early. I got in about uh, 2012, 2014, but that was the time where there wasn't much uh, persona building in the platform. It was pretty much um, a very 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 B two B. People, I I got in because people are telling me that. Um, this is where you can really find your jobs fast. This is where people can see your profile fast. So long story short, that's the reason why I got in. But for some reason, I think uh, three to four years ago, something really changed. Like the way, the way in which um, they allow content to be created, um, it allows a lot of room for us to really sh uh, share the way we think about things. So I, I, started really getting, um, I started getting really active only like last year just to have a hang of things. Um, it has gotten me quite good traction and uh, I'm using this platform. I'm using this platform and now in the live stream to say thanks to everyone who engaged with me uh, on my content. I, um, how should I say, it's saying this with a lot of humility because um, I, I don't think all of you owe me anything, including a like or a celebrate uh, or a comment, but uh, you do. So whether you're shitting on me or whether you are agreeing or you're, or you're just like, Oh gosh, this guy is like, whenever I tap onto the icon in my post feed, I see him and uh, that's, oh, I really feel like punching him. Thank you to all of you. Uh, from a pure marketer, pure marketer's perspective, good is good, bad is good. So I love it. I love all of you. Thank you so much. And uh, I hope, genuinely, I hope that uh, probably with this live show, uh, with all our active personas here, I can get to convert all the silent middles to be our direct connections. All of us, not just mine, all of us. Because being my connection doesn't take anything away from the rest of my three friends. Doesn't. You can connect with all of us. It doesn't Absolutely. mean anything. So that's why I'm here and that's the, the orientation that I'm taking. Probably a bit too much. Um, I'll, I'll get the airtime back to Kevin um, because he's the host. He should be doing the talking. Uh, Kevin, have a run for the money. Uh. Go ahead. All right. So um, for me, you know, um, I, I own a full stack digital marketing agency. So um, I live and breathe um, the social media platforms. Right. Um, that's what pays my mortgage. Um, that's what, you know, puts my kids in school and uh, puts food on the table. But besides that, I've been doing LinkedIn since 2002. And it just came out of the whole idea of, hey, um, how can I make my personal profile stand apart from others? Because back in the days, it was still paper resume, right? So I saw this LinkedIn thing rolling out, and um, I was an early adapter because I got laid off, right? Okay. So for a corporation, and I was one of the lucky few. Um, whenever the iPhones came out, I was in the newspaper industry, um, and I was a software engineer. And they decided to move my operations to overseas. And we all got laid off. Yeah, a very similar situation to a lot of folks today, right? So I was young, 
Um, you know, I was excited about life while everyone was um, devastated and my company, I was like, hey, there has to be something else besides a paper resume. So what I did was I created my LinkedIn account because people were saying, hey, um, these resumes are going to go online. It's going to go onto these social platforms. So I created my profile, um, started job hunting, applying for jobs, and the rest is history, right? So um, I use LinkedIn as a someone looking for a job, but I also use LinkedIn um, throughout my career, right? Um, I've owned a couple businesses, but at the same time, I've also been a recruiter. So I used it um, as an IT recruiter. I use it to prospect um, folks that um, – potentially that we could hire um, for the IT team I was on. Um, so I use LinkedIn from every aspect. And nowadays um, is content creation, right? Um, you yeah. can have your own personal brand. Um, you can have a voice. Um, you can connect with people beyond borders like we're doing now and just hear from different perspectives. And um, while I was working on my digital agency, um, you know, we had a strong um, social media channels for our company, but um, it was probably around a couple years ago when we really took my personal brand seriously, where I started putting on content and I was like, man, I have this team of videographers, I have content writers, but I don't do anything online, you know, um, besides, you know, I was your typical, um, let's go look at what other people have to say. Um, let's look at job opportunities of my company fails. Um, how much can I get paid <laughs> working for someone, you know, but then I was like, Hey, maybe I should look into building my personal brand. So then I started be becoming a content creator, putting videos out there. And one thing led to <clears throat> another. And now I have this huge network on a global level that I can connect to, uh, build relationship and talk. So it's been amazing. So that's my LinkedIn journey. So I'm sure it's journey? a very compressed one. By the way, I think, yeah, that's right. I think we need to get Jeremy to talk so that you can rescue yeah. Timothy back into the screen. Uh, <laughs> go ahead, bro. Yeah. Go ahead. I guess by default, I have to go next because uh, I was hoping to deflect it to Timothy because, uh, you know, I have a long story. But anyway, um, try to compress the story because I know everyone's just giving a summary. So here's, here's my story, right? Um, <clears throat> never did really believe in LinkedIn. Um, it was only when I was uh, reorganized of my organization uh, in uh, late 2013. So in 2014, uh, I moved back from uh, Shanghai, China after nine years there. And uh, that was when I realized that, oh no, I've, all my network is in China, right? And I didn't have anything for sure. Um, so I started to panic also <clears throat> trying to look for a job to uh, put up my profile on LinkedIn. And uh, if, 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 most people think that LinkedIn is where you get jobs. Uh, let me debunk it by saying, you know, there's, there's no way, at least not for me. I've never, never got like a job offer uh, from, from LinkedIn, okay? To me, at least from, from my experience. So in a way, you can say that um, I'm trying to overcompensate here uh, because I didn't have any network um, when I came back, um, back to Singapore after nine years in China. So 2014, I started... Uh, putting things up on LinkedIn and it was just the bare minimum, you know, because in my head, I was still more like, a, Hey, you know, I just put a little bit of information there and uh, you know, if job recruiters are really interested, you know, they'll contact me, that kind of a thing. You know, I was, my head was still in the clouds. Huh? Um, but the reality of things is that, uh, you know, uh, didn't get any offers mm -hmm. on LinkedIn. So it doesn't really work as a job uh, portal. And I sort of put it aside and, um, and it was only, Oh, Timothy, you guys hear me again? Okay, good. Yes. Good. So the, the technical difficulties are if you ever have a clock reminder, it bl it completely takes you out of audio. So I just have to explain. <laughs> Crazy. Oh, Things okay. happen. Things happen. But no, we learned. We learned. We're, we're going to give you your airtime very soon. So just get ready because uh, yeah, yeah. Jeremy is sharing. Very, now. Very, yeah. very my story, right? So yeah. so where was I? Oh, yeah. So um, so I left LinkedIn aside for a long while. Um, and it wasn't until I got my current job in 2017. And I sort of saw like a, a role model. Um, he's my boss's boss. Uh, he's since left the company, but but he has such a great um, uh, LinkedIn profile and following that, uh, you know, he's deemed as the expert in the field of retail. And I thought, you know, hey, you know, 
he, he posts a lot of things on LinkedIn. He share articles, has his own articles and his own views. And and to me, that was pretty amazing. And uh, I sort of aspired to be him, but um, maybe not in the international level. So I thought, hey, maybe I could do something, uh, you know, be be sort of a retail spokesperson or really just observe trends and share what I think and see uh, in retail in just Asia Pacific, which is the area I'm covering. And, uh, and, and that was when I started to really... Um, look into LinkedIn as a platform. Uh, what well, you could say for personal branding, you could say for for um, putting my voice out there, or you could say, you know, even just sharing and uh, doing uh, some good for the retail community in general or for Asia Pacific. Uh, that's the role I saw myself uh, trying to play, at least for now. And, uh, and, and to be honest, uh, when I got on LinkedIn, looking at it as not as a, as a job portal, but as really... Uh, uh, it, as, as a place where I can go in and look for information, uh, that's where I really opened my eyes because um, now I switched from Facebook to going to LinkedIn default to read on things. I'm trying to uh, absorb as much as I can so that I could offer uh, my own own voice to, to the retail space. However, I felt that in that process, I've learned a lot. Um, reading from people in this uh, field, the experts, learning from them, trying to uh, understand what they say, what they mean in Europe and US and what that might mean for Asia Pacific. And in short, it, it just made me much better at my job. And there's a lot of free research materials, reports that people are just sharing on LinkedIn. I just grab as much as I can. I follow experts who are experts in retail or, or in China, or in China and retail, e-commerce and all that. I got, get so many sources of information that really become useful in my job. And uh, that, that really, to me, was the best value I got out of this platform. Of course, apart from um, knowing you guys, putting up videos up there and doing live, you know, connecting with other people. So that, that really has helped me a lot. Um, so I just want to put it out there. Uh, for those who are still thinking uh, of LinkedIn as a job portal, uh, sorry, it's, it's gone beyond that. Way, way Great gone point. beyond that. Absolutely. Yeah, it's, stop, it's stop a good looking point. at it. It is yeah. not. It is not really. It is not. And for those people who are worried, right? If you, if you know, of course, if you are looking at this, you're on LinkedIn. But if you have friends who are worried, oh, should I put my LinkedIn port, uh, uh, information? Uh, should I do, do an account? Um, will my boss think that I'm looking for a new job? You know, don't worry about that because here's the tip. Um, look at, check, check out your boss profile, right? If your boss is already on LinkedIn. Why shouldn't you be on, right? He's also putting himself out there, right? Mm -hmm. And and if your boss is not on LinkedIn, even more so, you should put your profile there because he wouldn't know, right? If you're looking for a job <laughs> or not. So so either way, just be on LinkedIn. You know, advise your friends who are still pondering if they should still be on. You know, for the reason of uh pushing yourself further professionally, uh, understanding uh what's going on out there in the business world. I think that's really the true reason why uh anyone should be on LinkedIn. So that's those my are, piece, that's my story. Th those are very, very good points. I think we're going to expand on that later, right? So um, yeah. just, just before we get into the main show, you know, like, Timothy, finally, right? Um, Hello, I know. You join us, right? Uh, yeah, <laughs> Musketeer, okay, okay. Straight, sh straight shooter, you know, like, Be go straight. Before, before we start, I, I really just want to, uh, you know, maybe ask uh, uh, Timothy to introduce himself <laughs> and maybe yeah. even to educate us how to pronounce his last name. <laughs> Fair, and uh, question, yeah, question. yeah, so go ahead, take it away. All right, so I'm Tim De Jesus. Uh, you know, I know the four of you, we've all interacted along the way, and I definitely appreciate your friendship on LinkedIn. Uh, you know, I got into LinkedIn, I want to say around like 2011 or 2012, and I my profile sat dormant for a very long time. I really didn't do anything with it. I logged in occasionally, I looked at people's stuff, and you know. After logging in and paying attention, I was like, wow, there's actually some really valuable information on here. And that's kind of what got me started on LinkedIn. So, you know, at the time I was working for a lender, um, you know, I've been in the car business a long time. I just started my own profession, mm -hmm. which I'm very happy about. And I, to be honest, I can credit LinkedIn to that. I wouldn't have had the confidence to do so without LinkedIn. Um, but yeah, that's me in a nutshell. I mean, if, if anybody's on here and they've followed me a little bit, you know, I'm a little bit quirky. I kind of say what's on my mind, <laughs> but, uh, you know, I, that's what social media is all about. Right. I, I think you just boxed us, all of us. 
<laughs> no, stop. <it. laughs> uh, I mean, I mean, I mean. Let's just uh, let's just get the ball rolling, right? I mean, like uh, eighteen minutes into the show, we're done. We're done with introductions. So um, let's just pick up on a point that you just mentioned, right? Um, Jeremy and myself, maybe even Kevin. You look, we we are Asians. We are polite, so we always get our guests to talk first, right? Um, you talk about you you being quirky in your contents and looking at you now via the the via live stream. Mm-hmm. We can see that um, actually there's that tinge of reservation in you. you mm-hmm. You're not, you, you don't appear that way in the way that you write your contents, right? And I think uh, my point, um, that's the benefit of having the content to speak for us. Because there are times where in society, it's, it's not just about us. It's about like now, there's four of us talking, right? right. So in live interaction, we do think about the other party. But when we are constructing content as just us, we can just put our put out our thoughts the way that it's meant to be. And I think the way all of us are doing it, we are very, very direct. I think there are times where you are very, very direct. So why not just share with us? Um, when, when you do construct, I mean, I'm segueing uh, segue to like content just for a short while. Right. Um, when, when you do construct your content, um, do you filter or unfilter the kind of uh, messages that you want to put through? I really, honestly, most of my content is derived from life situations. That's just how a lot of stuff comes yeah. up. So, you know, for example, uh, you know, recently I've had a lot of positive content because I feel like we all could use some positive content. If you turn on the news for a matter of two minutes, you see what's going on in the world. So, you know, for me, I felt an obligation to keep everybody positive. Like, why... Why do I need to contribute to everything that's going on in the news? Instead, let's do something different. So, you know, that's where my content a lot of times comes from. Is It's com- coming from a place of what I'm feeling. And like you said, I mean, it, it's very direct. It's to the point. Um, but, you know, at the end of the day, we're all here for a reason, right? Why are we on LinkedIn yeah. is the question. You know, for me, I, my profile sat dormant. I didn't realize the power of it. But at the end of the day, when you have a network of 5,000, 10,000, 20,000 followers, you know, you have a little bit of latitude. You have people you can get advice from. You can potentially have a buyer in your marketplace when you have that kind of following. So why are we on LinkedIn? For me, it's just having a little bit of a brand, having a voice, which you don't have, and having a presence globally that you wouldn't have in your backyard. You know, in your backyard, you can only go but so far. Globally, you can go pretty far and, you know, the sky's the limit. There's people on LinkedIn with 2 million followers, you know what I mean? And for us, you know, our little following, I like how it is. I like how it's constructed. I like being close with the people I, I connect with. Um, you know, who knows? I don't, see, I don't see myself ever getting 2 million followers. But at the end of the day, the people that I have and I've all learned from all of you. And like I said, from the last LinkedIn Live I was on, I learned so much and You know, one of the things that was brought up last time that I do want to touch on is, you know, I forget who said it, but one of you said it's cheaper than ever to start a business. And that's so true. (laughs) And it's so true. That was you, Jeremy. It was. No, no, no. That's Aldrich. 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 It's so true. I mean, I'll give you guys an example and hopefully it helps some of you in these moments because some of us have lost our jobs. Right. You can start a website for twenty dollars a month. You can. Get a you can get in America, you can get a financial institution number for zero dollars. You know, a lot of the things that it takes to become an entrepreneur cost practically nothing these days, depending on the business. So, Aldrich, that was a great point. I mean, it's so true. And I would have never learned that if I wasn't on LinkedIn. So, you know, that's a lot of reason why I'm on LinkedIn. You learn from other people and it helps you in your general daily life. And definitely, right. I mean, if I would to just add on that point before I, I give the airtime back to my rest of my brothers, right? Interest rates are at 5,000 year low. US is back to zero again. <laughs> guys, come on, guys. Absolutely. Well, I, I know, right? It could, be, it could be an Asian teaching thing or it could be a global thing. I, I don't want to guess, but I'm putting it out there. Right, that uh, you know, don't owe people money, don't borrow, but people in 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 the developed world has to understand now that the banks and the institutions are starting to pay you to borrow. Hey, mechanics have changed. Relook it, you know, 
um, for your business, for your working capital, great stuff, that's leverage. Just think about how the funds are to be utilized. Right? I mean, if, if you were to borrow to buy a car, to buy a summer palace, you know, cut that thought, right? Let's, let's, let's be practical. Right. Let's be practical, right? But uh, things are really, really changing. So we should, we should respond with the times, right? And I think Kevin, as the entrepreneur, will have a lot to say about this. He's already on social media. So his cost <laughs> is going to be like, like, you know, close to ground zero, but maybe he can get his cost to a negative. I don't know. What do you think, Kevin? <laughs> yeah, I think, you know, it's definitely the cost of entry slow. And one of the biggest things with um, social media is um, how early are you? Yeah. You know, are you early to the platform to adapt? Like right now, you know, LinkedIn's engagement is amazing um, it's because wild. it's still it's still new, right? Um, yeah. For content creator, it's still new because it's really popular here in the U.S. But hey, what about Asia countries? Because it's just not the U.S. It's a global thing, right? Um, social media connects us to Africa. There's uh, Russia, there's all these places, right? And people aren't active yet. So it's still early. So if you're an early adapter, it might be just a post a day, right? But think of these, I always say this, think of social media as your TV stations, right? These are marketing channels that you can be on. Um, like, and it's like Eldrick said, for absolutely zero. It doesn't cost anything. It just costs you time and you know, sharing, you know, bring some value to the table. And if you, you're someone that can bring value to the table, there's a business opportunity. Mm -hmm. And I tell all my clients that, um, so back when I started J29, uh, we were consulting um, small business in the, the local community. And um, what we did was um, pretty much I started out of my basement, right? So it cost me zero, kind of like Eldrick said, um, you know, I got business license. You know, um, I did it online, didn't cost very much. I um, built my own website, uh, pay for some hosting, and I started consulting clients. And the value I had was me. You know, um, I knew how to work um, technology and do some digital things. And I just started helping other people do it, you know. And yeah. so a lot of times I think people overthink it when it comes to entrepreneurship. You know, uh, we might think, hey, um, doing live shows is easy or doing Zoom, but there's coaches out there that teach you how to do live videos and people pay thousands of dollars for a live video coach. OK, um, there's yeah, there's guys in America that teach you only how to utilize LinkedIn. That's it. And right now, all four of us can teach people how to utilize LinkedIn, right? Uh, so, I mean, the, the business opportunities there, right? And right now, I guarantee you, out the woodwork, there's going to be people that are going to coach people how to use Zoom, <coughs> right? All your Zoom coaches are going to pop out of nowhere, you know? $50 a month, I can teach you how a course on how to utilize Zoom. When Zoom offers it for free for you when you sign up for the platform, you know, they have videos already. But there's coaches because there's always people who need hand-holding. It's just like personal training, right? We can all eat less and go exercise. But why would we hire a personal trainer? The reason is as humans, uh, we need motivation. We need encouragement. We, uh, <laughs> all of us. And this is a global thing, right? Uh, we're, we're big babies. You know, and we like service. So if you can offer a service and there's a need, there you go. There's a business opportunity. You're 100% so. right. <laughs> I mean, there's, there's business opportunities in everything. I mean, the reality is, though, just keep in mind, and, and I, I think we can all say this, right? We've probably all posted something that's falling flat. Is that fair to say? We've all posted something that just went nowhere. Yep. Right? It's all about the value you bring. So yep. as a, as a content creator, you know, what you want to do is be relevant to what's going on around you. And you also want to just bring value, not say everything that everybody else is saying, because there's a hundred people saying the same thing on LinkedIn at any given time. I think we've all seen this. You <laughs> have a lot to say about that, you know, before, yeah. before even this, before even, before even, uh, we got connected, I think, um, when, when your content came in, I was like, huh? 
huh, this chap <laughs> has a lot of things to say, but I'm going to leave it to you because <laughs> that should oh. come out of your mouth, right? Not me. I'm just directing it to you, but uh, I, you have I, a lot I, to say about that. So go, go on. No, I mean, I mean, listen, again, you know, I, I'm not afraid to call people out on stuff because at the end of the day, the reality is, look, I mean, bring value. Don't don't show up and just say what everybody else is saying. Don't just always share something because it doesn't go anywhere. What are you bringing to the table? So, you know, if, if you're going to if you're going to be in content creation, you have to bring something unique. And I think what you're alluding to, Aldrich, is that's kind of my brand. Right. I just I'm myself. I'm always going to be myself. I tell everybody else to be themselves. And. It's worked for me. It can work for you. Uh, I mean, definitely, right? Um, I mean, I'm just stealing a, one minute before it goes to Jeremy. So Jeremy can prepare. I can see he's on his face already. <laughs> um, Things in my head right now. Cause, there's, cause... A, there's a lot of... There's, uh, just, just give me a minute so that I can segue to you. There's a sure. lot of action now because um, given the situation that we have today, definitely people are turning onto their mobile phones more frequently than usual. But at the same time, uh, whether this is an opportunity or not an opportunity as content creators, if, if we look at it from a day-to-day -day or weekly basis, right, there's always repeat genres that's coming from different people. Uh, whether it's a copy and paste with a little bit of innovation, I, I'll just leave it as that. Um, but the thing is, the thing is, um, we are all into a creative business, all of us. No, no, one, no one aspires to be the next number two. Uh, I'll give an example. I'll give an example. Sure. Um, I'm not, I, I don't think it really excites me or get me, you know, jumping off the bit, just wanting to be uh, Kevin number two, Timothy number two, or, or Jeremy number two. That, that doesn't make sense, right? So, so if we apply that to the contents that, that we are creating, we, we can, in fact, just look at the opposite direction, what people are doing. Most of the time, like, I think these days, um, by the way, I'm full of love and support for these people, right? Because it, it, takes, it takes time to do that. So it's like, um, you know, it's time to network, like this post, comment. <laughs> um, great, great. Um, people aren't really, like, getting sick of it yet. But I think uh, we, we need to be sensitive, right? If, if we are creating such contents, we need to be sensitive, like, hey, there's too many people doing it. That's... Too many people doing it. If I'm doing it, it's, it's not getting me anywhere. So should I do something different? And I think all of us here, we want to do something different, right? Kevin's content is very different. I mean, like, I remember you, you, you get your boys to do the dishwashing, right? Look, yep. I read, I read. Uh, Timothy, you, you were talking about, um, I, think, I think it was at the very beginning of the lockdown, whatever nonsense. And then you're saying, okay, <laughs> great. You know, I'm going out to get some vitamin D. You know, like, I'm like, Hmm, okay, that's, that's fresh. You see, you see, the thing is, um, as with mainstream, we, if we want to know what's going on, whether it's sensational, whether it's real, suppressed, or fake, whatever, it's there, right? So if, if we are replicating it into, our, into other people's post feed, you're not going to get anywhere. So guys, so guys, everyone that's listening, right? This is from the, all of us. It's from all of us. You want audience? You want audience? You need to be original. You need to be creative. Yes. Don't, don't, don't do what most people are doing. If influencers are already doing it, you better don't do it because Absolutely. they are going to suck away all the attention. It's not practical. Right? Absolutely. And 100%. And this is from, I just want to chime in because I'm a digital marketer. So um, this is one of my pet peeves, right? Uh, because I see so many digital marketing people, right, all over Instagram, LinkedIn, all these platforms. And one of my pet peeves is, uh, you know, everyone loves Gary Vaynerchuk. And, I, I mean, I follow his content, too, and in the past. And I like him, I, you know. And um, he goes to some of the same conferences that, you know, I've gone to and stuff. And it's great, you know. But that works for Gary. Mm-hmm. But it really bothers me when there's someone, you got to remember, VaynerMedia, the company he owns, which most people don't even know the name of the company he owns because he's built such a successful personal brand, um, is a $150 million company. So there, he can say some of the stuff he says, right? He's yeah. very successful and he worked towards it, right? But now when 
you're a startup digital agency and you just graduated from, let's say you just started, right? You just graduated high school, whatever, right? And you get that same message. It's a little, mm, you know. It doesn't have uh, anything behind it. Yeah, I'm with you. Yeah, so uh, you have to be original. I rather, if you're a younger person and you're starting a digital agency, what about having some original content, right? Um, what about documenting your journey? You know, how it is as someone who, uh, you know, went straight from high school to starting this digital agency and what are the challenges, right? And then every once in a while, and then you see these guys, right? And now they're trying to talk like Gary. You know, they're saying, you know, they're like talking about hustle and they're trying to dress hip. But like two years ago, you go back on their profile, they were in dress shirt and tie, and now they have fuck you and every other word. And if it's not them, it doesn't fit, you know? It when Gary does it, it's his personality, it's him, right? And I think that's why my pet peeve is be you. Yeah. Just be authentic, you know? Um, don't try to be someone else because when you start trying to be a Gary, start trying to be a Shay or whoever's out there, a Simon Sinek, what happens is you're only helping one person. And guess who that is? Not it's you. number one. The original person. You're just lifting their brand. Absolutely. It doesn't do anyone any good. And if you want to lift your own brand, start building your own personality because you are all created unique. Yeah. We're all special. All, all four of us here, you know, you know, we might be ordinary guys, but hey, our perspective is unique. And you need to voice your own self, you know. And I think that's so important. Absolutely. So if you don't get anything out of me talking, be original is so important. <laughs> and I want to let I want to let Jeremy speak. I just want to I want to circle back to two points. Um, one is what you just said, and the other one is the like, comment, and network that Aldrich was talking about. So I want to circle back to those afterwards. But Jeremy, I want you to get the floor on this. Oh, for me, okay. So my perspective. So. Um, well, most of you are uh, entrepreneurs, you have your own business, but I'm the corporate guy, right? The corporate creature. I've never had my own business. So, so where, where's the value in, in being on LinkedIn, right? Uh, I think that's the point I want to talk about. Uh, we talk about there's no cost, it only cost your time. Uh, so for, for the corporate guy, really, um, well, put it this way. I, I put up videos of retail documenting me going to a specific retail shop, which I find, you know, interesting concept. I share what I learned. Hopefully, other retailers can uh, learn from their physical retail shops. I do that, but I don't get paid extra. No, I don't. It's my own time. Uh, when I'm on business trip at night, I go to Starbucks, Roastery, I shoot the video, I do the editing, and I'm really slow at it because I'm self-learning it, putting subtitles and all. That takes me three to five hours, man. And, and I'm so excited. I post it up, and I only have, what, 30 views, 40 views? How does that feel? After putting, like, six hours traveling there, shooting the video, editing another three hours, that's six hours of my personal time. I could be sleeping, but I do it. Where's the value in that? I don't get, I don't get paid more for doing that. But I, I guess I, the point I'm trying to put is for, for, for a corporate person like me, um, I think uh, you, you, you have something to show for when you do things like that. And the thing to show for is the word passion, right? And I benefited from that. Why? Uh, let me explain. So a lot of us like to say that, oh, you know, if you go for job interviews, right? Back to this job thing, right? You like to say, I'm passionate in X, I'm passionate in Y. But can you prove it? Mm. Can you prove it that you are passionate in that thing that you say on paper? You probably can't, but I think I can now. At least I, I hope I, I can come across to probably recruiters. When I say, oh, I'm passionate about retail. They don't believe me. I say, just check out my LinkedIn profile. I do videos there. Who do you recruit? Who, which of your candidates does that? You know, says yeah. that he or she knows retail, but actually goes down to the retail floor and show people and give your own views. I mean, this is, you know, more for posts, you know, but if a video, you know, in that way, I'm different from other people. Yes, it's at my own time and my own expense uh, most times, but it, it aligns with what I want to do. It aligns with my why, why I'm on LinkedIn, you know, and it goes down to the word passion. It's going to help you. Yes, it costs zero to be here, but there are times where, you have to put in your time, a lot of that, you know, just to build that. I know you can call it personal brand. You can, you can say that you're building a, a legacy 
or digital trail of who you are so that people can put in more pieces of you uh, rather than a piece of a uh, resume paper on email, right? So, I mean, really, recruiters go in and look at all your social media feeds, right? Uh, even Facebook or, or whatever else, uh, maybe mostly LinkedIn. But if you are going there for, a, say, for example, a top position, they want to see the entire 360 view of who you are, be it your personal life, you know, be it, you know, whatever you say, you know, uh, and, and, and that is why, you know, I consciously try not, I, I consciously avoid. In fact, when we were setting up this life perspective, you know, I, I put a few rules, right? Let's not talk about politics. It's very divisive, <laughs> right? Let's not talk about sports. Yeah, because you may like basketball. I don't know. I don't understand basketball, you know, that kind of a thing. And then people have different comments and all that. So similarly, in that sense, you know, there are certain things that I specifically put on LinkedIn. There are certain things I put on Facebook because I started with Facebook. Um, that was more of me being me, you know, sharing funny stuff. But I don't put that on, on LinkedIn. Um, if, if the recruiter wants to see a personal side of me, yeah, go to Facebook. Uh, although sometimes I'm trying to build some bit of a consistency around both platforms, you know, or sharing my videos. Hopefully my six hours reach a thousand <laughs> people rather than just six people, you know. So, so there's, there's all value in that. And, and, you know, I'm not going to get more business. Maybe the business goes to my company. Uh, uh, I've so far in, I, I really started getting on in, I think, uh, middle of 2018. Then I really started going heavy and try to leverage more on this platform. That's when I started. And, and it was a learning journey because when, when I started posting, you know, I didn't know what to do. I was doing what everybody did, you know, just share this article, you know, just put it out there. Right. And, and at that time, uh, my company was uh, exploring social media as well. And there's, uh, and in LinkedIn, there's this thing called the um, Elevate, LinkedIn Elevate. So basically, it's like yep. a curation platform, you know, somebody manages it, puts up uh, articles that we share, and it can, we could just easily take that to the share button. You know, the, the first uh, introductory text is already there. I started doing that for a little while, but I felt that, hey, this doesn't add value because there's no, there's no perspective from me. There's no perspective from Asia. Uh, is this going to impact Asia? Or, or maybe I should throw a question and say, hey, this is what's happening in US or Europe. You know, what does it mean to you in, in Asia? This is the same thing, you know, and especially for retail, where it's so dynamic. You know, uh, I always tell people China is leading retail globally. Feel free to disagree. If not <laughs> on par in US in terms of speed and innovation, just look at the scale, right? 11, 11 singles day, right? Give me a US or Europe online event that pushes as much money you know i've not seen any other than singles day right mm -hmm. so so the point here really being is you, you need to search for that why you're on linkedin which is why we're having this chat i know my why I, i'm getting clear now but it was not so clear initially really and and the point about being different that was exactly uh what i was trying to do um after i just started with posts and um you know i was sort of like challenged to do uh, a video to do video and i thought that would be a good way to differentiate myself uh, my first video really sucked uh, it was just me you know my head talking to myself commenting on retail trends how credible is that right how credible <laughs> not at all i'm a nobody i'm just trying to think of what i know and then just speak to a, a situation and and really i didn't think that helped me so i thought um i thought you know i'm gonna ditch that i don't want to be the talking head talking by myself, <laughs> hopefully somebody likes it or identifies with me. So I thought, you know, I'm going to try and do, uh, you know, what physical retail is all about, being there physically. So I, I learned on my own, you know, bought a gimbal, took the camera down. And if you see my initial, <laughs> my videos was all over the place. The gimbal just went cranky and the whole screen just went whacked sideways and all. But oh, I tried, don't remind I me of my first video. <laughs> I shot recently. Went Th those were your best videos, though. Yeah. Probably have the most <laughs> bloopers and yeah. bloopers <laughs> have the best yeah. viewership, man. And bloopers, and man. and on, honestly, even my a uh, few uh, more of the later videos, you always see me go like um um, and I always go, you know, or behind me is the shop, you know, as you can see, as you can see, you know, I always have the a lot of the ums and the uh because I I don't really know what to say because sometimes I'm there first time at this location. And I just need to quickly assess, okay, I'm giving myself an excuse for lousy video and that preparation. But then again, that's me. I think that's special. I think that's original. Uh, I haven't seen a lot of that going on. Yeah, there are one or two 
people who does it, but maybe at a different angle, they go more on technology. And I've become friends with a few of them, a few of them, because we are furthering the cost of retail. And I think that's important because uh, retail is not about what you read in the papers, right? Because what you read, so it's about shop closures, or shop openings, layoffs, especially these days. So mm -hmm. I, I want to be part of the action. I want to uh, contribute there. And, you know, that's just my perspective from a corporate guy. Yeah, I would, but I would say, Jeremy, I mean, in doing that, you've built your own personal brands, whether it was your why or not, that's what differentiates you. So that's, you know, yeah. again, that's a great thing. And, you know, if you ever decide to go on your own, you kind of already have a following and a brand that people can relate to, you know? So, I, I mean, yeah. that's, I think really what you're doing, <coughs> you hit the nail on the head. You set yourself apart, but now you have your own personal brand. A lot of people on here don't have a brand. Um, and that's, you know, I wanted to go back to what you said, Aldrich, about the like, share, hey, click here, let's let's connect. So I when I very first got on, I started getting into those posts a little bit. And, and I kind of quickly realized, like, what is this doing for my brand? <laughs> Nothing, you know, like the thing. And I, and I never posted one like, hey, let's connect. But, you know, you think about it, you connect with a lot of random people. And how do they know you? They don't because what what brought you there? A post that the person who posted it is getting a lot of post engagement. I think that's why a lot of people do it. Of course, you get a lot of post engagement on those. But again, you know, and, and this is not to knock anybody. I'm just being real with everybody, right? If you're doing these posts, you may have a lot of followers, but what is your brand? Your brand is Let's Connect, or what does that do for you? <laughs> you, you know what I mean? Like, how does anybody separate you from? I don't want to drop names, but the 10 other people who did that post today you know so uh, make it ten thousand, right yeah seriously so you know i mean on that tip and, and it's not knocking anybody because granted some of those people have a tremendous amount of followers you know so more power to them but what can you sell off that you know your brand is the let's connect person so when you go to actually offer a product how did you bring value to that person you know so that's just my take on those posts. I mean, maybe somebody can enlighten me, but just the way I feel, like I said, I think all four of us, we have our own little niche brand and we post and we talked about being unique and different. And I do believe that, you know, listen, if you want to build a following that's going to stick, that's going to be loyal, then you do have to be yourself because otherwise you are just another person who posts. Let's connect and everything else, you know, and that doesn't really separate you, nor does, I'll tell you, if, if you're going to offer something, how do I believe in anything you're selling? You know what I mean? Like, how do I buy into you when all I know you from is let's connect? So that's my two cents on, on that. That's just my take. I, I, and I while, think, yeah, go ahead. Yep. Go ahead, Kevin. Yeah. So what Timothy mentioned also resonates too. Um, just remember this. People don't always buy brands, right? They buy the people behind the brands. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes we forget that. Um, since Timothy is in the... Um, car business. And um, I had my share of um, when I didn't have a job, I sold my car cars um, just to um, make ends meet to put Nothing food on the that. table. So um, did that you can make good money. But then, hey, in order to win the worst car salespeople are the ones that are trying to sell cars. Yes. And the best car salespeople are the ones that <laughs> are there to listen and build relationships right mm -hmm. and um i noticed at first i was like man uh, you know uh, i never sold cars how am i gonna sell cars and then i started learning it's just listening and <laughs> building relationships and by the time they sit there for about an hour i can sell them any car i want because they decided they like me mm -hmm. right so and that's how it is in the marketplace you know if you don't put yourself out there in your own voice your own authentic voice then how does the people that connect with you determine <laughs> that they like you? Because without social media, you can't connect to thousands of people, right? There's only eight hour days. I can only connect to so many. Mm -hmm. And nowadays I can connect to thousands of people and let the viewers choose if they like me. Think about it. That's yeah. the definition of a hot lead, mm -hmm. hot opportunity. If they already like you, most likely they're going to listen to what you have to offer. And if there's value, they're going to buy from you. Absolutely. It's that simple. You don't need a guru to teach you that. No. It's very simple. We bought iPhones 
because of Steve Jobs, right? You know, he changed the market and we believe in selling the, hey, I can do it, you know? Same thing, certain people so Nike, you know, uh, Michael Jordan, you know, uh, when you're a kid, you think you can wear those shoes, you can go out there and you can be amazing, right? Just do it, you know? So people don't always buy th brands. They buy people behind the brands. And something um, I started talking to organizations, right, when I'm um, consulting them. If you're a smart business owner, you should encourage, you know, the people that work for you to build their personal brand. Stop being selfish and go, okay, just create content. I hate when I walk into a company and they go, oh, we share our company's content. It doesn't help your brand any no. because it's the people that power your company. Mm -hmm. You know, and people want to see, oh, man, wow, there's some unique, some unique employees. Wow, their, their employees have a voice. Let me check this brand out. So I always tell people, if every person in your company, I'm surprised companies don't make it a mandate to build your personal brand. Yeah. You know, this is uh, let me tell you, everybody, what he just said is gold. <laughs> that is 100 percent gold. He just dropped on you because realistically, I mean, and and. You spoke about the car business. You're 100% right. And let me tell you this. Say what you will about the car business. I know it's always got a bad rep. There's people, car salesmen, who have made 250 a year. I don't know a lot yep. of people who have made 250 a year. And I, I've worked with salespeople who have made 250 a year. A lot of freaking money. And it's exactly the reason they did it is because they built a loyal client base. They had a brand. And they had a following. And they didn't even do it on social media. Some of these guys did it before social media. But it's exactly what Kevin just talked about. They had a brand. People just kept coming back and sending their friends and family and neighbors. And this, they had a major following. They didn't need to even take the dealership's traffic. They had their own traffic at that point. And if, if they left the dealership, half the people would follow them. They go the with them. Place. Right. <laughs> so yeah. you, the, you just dropped gold on everybody. And it's so true what you just said. So, I mean, everybody should really pay attention to strong. Yeah. yeah, and uh, probably I'm gonna just add on a few points to what Kevin just mentioned, right? Um, which is which is really how how I I think about things these days. Now, um, I mean, to to the viewers who have been with us since the very first second, or even those that just hopped in, think about it this way: we have our live stream for close to fifty three minutes already. Okay, if you think, or if anyone thinks. That personal branding is just fluff. Think about it this way. We have unexpectedly spoke about Gary Vaynerchuk. We have unexpectedly spoke about Simon Sinek. Because these days, when you think about the word why, he doesn't own the copyright, by the way. It's not possible. I can't own the word how or what. <laughs> right? I can't. I can't. But the fact is, the fact is, today, if you mention find your why or that word why, you think of him. No, no, if you think, take a step back and think, if you think that's not helping you in any aspects of your life, think about it that way. When you look at your iPhone, who do you think of? Um, now, the point that I'm trying to make, right, is that uh, I'm not, I don't see the need to justify a business case for a personal branding because definitely there are people that's on various platforms, not just LinkedIn, that comes in with an intent. But, but if, you, if people don't remember you, they don't remember what you do. It's, it's, it's very simple. Mm -hmm. Literally, it's very simple. Now, the next tip. Does it mean that you can only write about your profession, your profile, your job? I don't think so. And I'm, I'm just going to share this because I, I've, been, I've been sharing this pretty openly, right? We are bottoms up. We're in the middle class. Mm -hmm. We have our struggles with work, with life. Now, think about it. Think about it. Waking up on a Monday after a Sunday euphoria, getting up 6 a.m. in the morning, going to the gym. How does that feel? You think you are the only one? You think you don't have the right to post that? Come on. No, that's not the case. Do you think... That just because you don't have a CFA behind your name, you can't talk about money. Right. You have a wallet, don't you? You sure. have a wallet, don't you? Right? So what happens when you run out of cash? You have cards, right? Everyone has that. You have that. 
Why aren't you writing about it? Because, because we all have those struggles. If you can write down those struggles, even if, even if you have nothing novel to share, please, please, you get resonance. You want to build a following? People have to resonate with you, right? Listen, if, you, you're, if you're broke, somebody's going to feel you on that. <laughs> it's true. There's okay, hey, there's more that's, people that's, broke. That's, 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 that's it. It's, it's, it's real, man. I mean, we've, we've, listen, I don't know about you guys. I've been there. So, you know, if somebody posted about being broke. I'm like, man, I get it. I've been there. Yeah. Trust me. I, I know. I still feel it to this day. So yeah. I, I'm with you on that. Oh, right. So um, I think, I think there's, there's, no, there's, there's no need to worry too much about whether there's value in doing a personal brand or whatsoever. But if, um, if people remember you, the, the, the scale that you're going to have is, is going to be ultimate, right? Like, like I've mentioned in our 53 minutes, we have unexpectedly spoke about so many people that's influenced us. They, they didn't pay us any advertisement dollars, not at all, right? Uh, but we all have I so wish much they do, though. Well, I wish they did pay us. Yeah, but they're, they're earning dollars because their name's getting mentioned. Somebody's going to be like, Gary who? And next thing you know. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Happens? They're checking yeah. it out. Precisely, yep. right? So, so to the point that um, we, we, to the point where any content creators or anyone that's on the LinkedIn platform today that's trying to build a following or a brand, I get that. It's intent. Um, all of us, we do have some form of intent here and there. Now, think about it this way. You might think that no one is going to talk about you even publishing 100, 200 pieces of content. Hey, guys, there's this thing called tagging. If someone writes a post, includes your name, two to three times a day, you have done something for that person, for that person, not you, not you, not you. Marketing is not about you, it's about the person, right? Because you have hit the hearts of that person. It's like, hey, shit, man, it's true. And, and because of that, and because of that, I'm, I'm motivated, I'm, I'm write something. So if we put ourselves out there, just put ourselves out there, to be the shoulders for others to stand on, everyone else benefits. Everyone, right? Mm -hmm. So you have an intent, great. But maybe we can start off just being a little selfless, right? Uh, times like this today, truthfully, some of the trending hashtags uh, I don't really follow anymore because uh, I think <laughs> it's, it's, um, it's a matter of a supply and demand, right? Oversupply now. No, probably I'm not going to be too involved in that one. Um, truth is, for every, everyone that is limited to the, the compounds of their house today, uh, which is absolutely necessary, I'm not going to debate about policy or policy makers, uh, we are dying for entertainment. And that's true. Think about it, guys. Just think about it. Just mm -hmm. think about it. If you, if you can put out something out there, you know, regardless how mature or immature that is, whether it's YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, LinkedIn, whatever platforms, just choose. If you can provide some form of entertainment today that is high value already because we are we 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 we, we need to have a life we're humans right mm -hmm. so guys maybe for everyone that's listening as well hello world um we we change with the times we we, we need really need to rethink about how uh, reserve we ought to be and whatsoever and i get it i'm an asian i'm an asian i get it i get it uh i have i have african mentees from zimbabwe uh they are also very very reserved but uh, i said that's that's the whole point that's the whole point because if the population is reserved and you are not trust me it's easy it's a lot easier i i wouldn't have made it in the u.s you know like uh i would have to go against people like timothy kevin you would have been fine, man. Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, 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 think about it. Um, the the way the way in which everyone can win. There's two ways of two types of competition, right? One is a, a win lose kind of competition, which means if um, Timothy or Kevin takes one from me, I have zero for myself. Or if Jeremy takes one from me, I have zero for myself. But there's another type of competition where we can so all win together. Yeah, so go ahead. My question, so my question is, um, ask the audience, what kind of entertainment would you like to see on our next episode? <laughs> so 
So no, do you no, want no, us no. to dance? No, 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 no. no. Uh, karaoke. No, no. We're, we're not. <laughs> we're not gonna. We're not gonna change this to TikTok. Okay, no, that's a different yeah, platform. Yeah. That's that's big. <laughs> uh, a filter. <laughs> No, no, no. <laughs> Business professionals, man. Keep it professional. <laughs> no, but, I think uh, Jer we're challenging uh, Jeremy. He's getting nervous. Now no, 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 no. <laughs> trust me. Trust me. I, I can sing. I can do your dead dances. Okay, I can. But no, no, no. Now you got to sing. Now you got to sing. No, no, no. Not on this <laughs> channel. <laughs> no, you said it. It must be true. <laughs> uh, or maybe if uh, I get one, one million yeah. followers, right? I'm mean, like a, a thousand now. Maybe I get one million followers. Like, yeah, I would see. We'll that'll, see about that. that. Definitely set you set you apart. But no, I mean, <laughs> you know, Aldrich got. I just want to say this real fast. I know we're getting close to closing time, but yeah, I yep. mean, that's what that's what resonated with me about this the the bottoms up perspective. You got to think about it, right? And we're all just regular people. And you know, we'll throw Gary Vaynerchuk out there, right? Gary Vaynerchuk at the end of the day was a guy. That's it, right? He's a guy, just like the four of us right here. He's just a guy, but he's a guy who happens to bring a lot of value. And, you know, uh, let's put it what it is in his type of language, the guy has balls. So he's not afraid to say what's on his mind. And that was his brand. And that's what sets him apart. Right. But at the end of the day, the bottoms up and why this whole thing resonated with me. I mean, that could be any of us. All four of us could be Gary Vaynerchuk. Right. But it just is a matter of our personal brand and people buying into it and being consistent. But, you know, that's what we want. That's that's why I wanted to join this and why I love the message, you know. Anybody from where you are in life can be better, can be something greater than yourself. So just keep that in mind as you watch us in the future. And also, I think the beauty, too, is um, even during the, these times right now that we're all inside our homes, um, we're all kind of in lockdown, quarantine, whatever you want to call it, right? Uh, the beauty is um, you'll start seeing the celebrities and the wealthy. Um, they're doing videos with themselves and they are locked down, quarantined, and they're just like all of us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no different, right? Because when it comes to what's happening today, you know, the virus don't see status. Mm -hmm. It doesn't care who you are, you know, and guess what? All of a sudden you see all this authentic content where you have celebrities performing with their wife or with their children, you know, they're not in makeup and dress up. And those are the <coughs> best content is the most authentic. Right. Mm -hmm. And we can all do it, you know, uh, but half of us, we, we is our own fear, right? We're afraid. I don't say, I, I don't bring any value, uh, but every time I meet someone, um, think of it, you know, every time you meet someone new, you always gain some value. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter who. Even the kid across the street from me, my son's friend, every once in a while, I gain some value. And that's so important. It might be just something he does that just puts a smile on my face. And it's that simple. And um, yeah. So. Yeah. No, <laughs> great stuff, guys. I really appreciate you guys having me on. I love being here. And it's, uh, you know, I'm looking forward to future episodes. And I thank everybody in the audience for watching. We really appreciate you guys taking the time. Oh, definitely yeah. for that one. And, and by the way, I think, I think maybe we can explore this as well, right? Um, Kevin, we, we might have space for another two more. Is yeah. that right? That's fine. So We're maybe good. maybe as a shameless plug, we can you know, just ask if anyone is actually interested we, we, we need some diversity. We need some perspectives from ladies. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, for in, sure. In any, in any format or, or whatsoever, right? You don't have to be like um, anchors. You can be a guest. Um, I think. Um, no Jeremy, pressure. The, no pressure. Jeremy, I, I think uh, you are intending to do a social media part two for the next episode, right? Which is uh, excluding LinkedIn or something like that. Yeah, we can talk. We can talk about the different uh, platforms as well. It's up to us to generate the content. So you know, yeah. watch out for our next uh, announcement or advertisement, uh, and then you know we can determine what we want to talk about. Yeah, but I think we we do really need some um, female voices that will add on to the perspective. Yeah. Absolutely. So now in the four blocks. Uh, hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because wait, people wait, wait. get tired of. 
we're, we're growing. We're growing. We started with three. Now we have four. And uh, I think my closing before uh, Kevin goes, goes to the official program closing, I think these days um, when environments change, right? When people start turning into social media, um, this is a shout out. Um, this is a shout out. I think influencers, you need to see yourselves as leaders today. Because everyone is on the platform. Whatever that you do, whatever that you don't do, or if you try, if you want to just continue to copy and paste your previous content or somebody else's content, people look to leadership today, right? There has never been a time in the past five years where everyone is so into their social media platforms. So please think about it. Tell people how to get into the platform, into the bandwagon, and let them prosper. I think that's very important. I'm saying this not because I'm an influencer. I'm not. I'm not. I, I, I don't have the status. I don't want to be comforted as status because it's, it's just not me. But the thing is, people with huge following, so let's talk about that. The, all, all of us here, we have huge following. I think no, no. it's absolutely important that we produce content that helps our following. I think that matters. That really, really matters. So for all of you that's listening to us today, from me, it's very simple. I just, have, I just want to have this message. Um, take care of your followers because they matter. They matter. And somehow, somewhere, you are a follower for, on somebody else's account and platform too. You want them to take care of you, right? It's, to me, it's no, a no-brainer. That, that's, a, that's a great point, man. I mean, I, you know, I think I try to be involved in all of you guys' posts. And I try to be involved. Listen, I try to pay attention to my feed. And I try to like and comment on as much as I can. If it resonates with me, and especially if, you know, we talk on the regular basis, I just want to support you because I like you and I like your content. I think you bring value, whoever you may be. So, you know, you should kind of have that mentality because honestly, it goes full circle. You know, I mean, I know for sure people appreciate that you're interacting with them as opposed to just posting and just, hey, whoever follows me, follows me. You know, it's good to give back and actually pay attention. And to be honest with you, I've learned so much from everybody. And like I said, I learned so much from the three of you on this last LinkedIn Live. And it really pushed me to, you know, go on my own. So I really appreciate you guys for that. Thank you. That's awesome. Bring someone along in the next yeah. round. Maybe that's how you can repay us. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so, Kevin, before you close, I just want to uh, final yeah. takeaway, right? Uh, just no start. Okay. Those who are on the edge, you know, thinking about it, just start. You don't have to put your entire resume online. It doesn't matter. Just start. Just looking at people you can learn from, uh, read a lot, and learn. This really is much, much better than going online to search because the people who, who, who post whatever content, you know, they really add value and you can learn a lot, whichever profession you're in. You know, it always is good to be keeping in trend with uh, where, whatever industry you're in. So that's my takeaway. Yep. And I think the biggest thing, you know, and I think it came from all of us, right? At the end of the day, it's all about building relationships. And to build relationships, you got to put yourself out there. You know, think of LinkedIn as this huge networking group, right? Uh, when you go to a networking event, if you don't talk to anyone and you go sit down on the side, grab your drink, but don't talk to anyone, it doesn't help anyone, right? It's not really a networking event for you. Why are you there in the you know? first place? <laughs> yeah. So you have to go give them the handshake, introduce yourself, and then you start building relationships. And once you meet these people, and a lot of people just trade business cards, right? But just business cards isn't good enough, right? You slowly get to know them. And the people that you like to choose to like, you end up maybe – meeting up for lunch and lunch becomes hanging out mm -hmm. and then you have build a friendship and then maybe you have kids that are around the same age and slowly that becomes a relationship and it might not always be a business <clears throat> opportunity but it's time that you can learn from someone and uh, there's always value right and just look at linkedin as a huge network opportunity and you go meet people that you go enjoy having conversation with but you first have to have the conversation. So, and that's what I want to end you guys with. And um, it's been a great night. And it one looks like point. quite one a bit. Point. I want to add on. Just one, one more point. point. Just okay. one more point. I'll make it fast. I no problem. Up, I grew up those days when I was taught that it's important to have the right connections. 
I grew up with the effort of building a Rolodex that shows how old I am. A Rolodex. <laughs> I remember. Okay? If you remember those days and you have a LinkedIn account, think about it. Your connections are just there now. You don't have to find out who, who, who should I know, who should I not know. That's a search bar. Mm -hmm. Do it. Guys, guys, we need to change the way we think about things. Right? So, um, add to the point that what Kevin has just mentioned, I think that's brilliant. Um, so, go ahead for the closing, Kevin. Yeah, for the closing, hey, uh, be sure to follow us if you like us and, um, you know, engage with our content and we will engage back. And if we miss anything tonight, feel free to even do a private message if you have any questions. Uh, we love to answer it. We're here to help each other out. Uh, we're not going to charge you. Eldrick might. I'm not <laughs> sure. <laughs> but we're not there to charge you. Um, this is just an opportunity for us to put ourselves out there to connect globally. And uh, we like to hear your perspective. So uh, uh, we need some females, um, just like Eldrick and Jeremy said. Um, so um, if you like to be on our you know, this happens every Wednesday, right? Um, for me, it's 8 p.m. Central Standard Time. And then, um, so feel free. Well, you it's know? Thursday. It's Thursday for uh, Singapore uh, GMT plus 8. Yep. And then it's 9 o'clock for Timothy in Standard Time. So, yep. yeah, so uh, feel free. Join us, you know. And, um, yeah. Appreciate See you on the next all of you. And Thank have a good morning and have a good night. Thank you guys so much. Thanks for getting Thank you, everyone. Thank you.